Hi, it's Dwyer. Wealthspinning.blogspot.com, a free site. Uh, also, keeping it free. .blogspot.com, a free site. Today is Thursday, March 30th, 2023. Let's talk money. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now first, let me just point out that um, whatever you do, you need to think about the currency that you're doing it in, right? Because we are going to be in a time of, we'll call it market deflation relative to some means of exchange that's going to look like inflation relative to others right for example i've been using um chat gpt the ai developed by open ai which is now embedded into microsoft bing let me just say it's a game changer um, years ago i used to hire people to do research memos for me that now you can do on your own with just a few chat GPT entries, right? This is going to be deflationary. In other words, a lot of employers are going to cut workers. They're going to save labor costs because now one person can literally do what several people used to do years ago, right? Now, just understand that's the trend we live in. Prices might increase because fiat currencies are being debased. So if you denominate transactions in fiat currency, the price is going to increase. What I want people to do is to think about deflationary currencies, or in fact, not even currencies, deflationary money that involves limited supply means of exchanges where you understand that the monetary base denominated in gold, silver, Bitcoin, Ethereum, which is now deflationary, right, are not going to increase. They're going to deflate. So in terms of real prices, Right? Just understand we're in a deflationary world. My first investment idea is what it has been online here for months, which is that you take a look at these deflationary means of exchanges. Right? Understand, whatever is happening in the United States, Bitcoin is now being accepted internationally. You'll notice Coinbase is having an argument with the SEC right now, and Coinbase has released some statements pointing out that the regulatory environment for cryptocurrency in the United States is far more restrictive than it is in other countries. You need to think globally. We're in a global world right now. Right? You need to think globally. You need to assume that the politicians that are running from both major parties are an uninspired group right now. You need to be investing based on market conditions. So the first idea I have is the same idea I've had in past videos. You definitely want to consider, or at least what I'll do is couch this differently. What I'm doing, what I've done, is I've invested in gold, silver, Bitcoin, Ethereum, right? I believe all of them are going to uh, jump in value. Understand that silver is used in things like solar panels if you believe in um, this alternative energy uh, anti-fossil fuel approach. Just understand silver has some real world usages in addition to being a precious metal right let's shift gears a little bit too the world's moving fast we know that evs are taking over although there are going to be a lot of headwinds right the energy grid quite frankly 
isn't ready for an immediate switch over into EVs. Understand too, with EVs, a lot of people are going to feel like they don't know a lot about the new technology and they're going to want the comfort of picking an EV from a brand they know, right? An internal combustion engine brand. We understand that in the United States, at least, Tesla has first mover status. But with that comes the premium of paying for first mover status. Also, we understand that consumer vehicles are just a small part of the market. You have an entire group of people who need to drive trucks in order to haul items. Um, they're an integral part of the economy. So let me just point out that I believe that when you're in a dealership and you're trying to find an EV to suit your needs, you're going to fall back on the comfort of a brand like Ford, right? Particularly if you're driving an F-150 right now and you want to switch over to an EV and you realize that Ford makes an F-150 electric vehicle. Let me also say too, following up on what I said earlier here, puts and calls, put options, call options are denominated right now in dollars, right? I'm just telling you they're going to be in this deflationary market where people are getting laid off, where some employers are laying off people by the thousands, where a company like Disney, a company like Google, um, a company like Microsoft uh, literally are making announcements where they're laying off huge portions of their workforce, right? Meaningful portions, several percent of their workforce. In that deflationary environment, just understand fiat currency is likely to be inflationary, especially coming into the fall a few months from now when politicians are going to want to make sure that people can afford the energy needed to heat their homes, right? They're also going to realize at a time when countries like France have people out in the streets right now protesting the recent raise in the retirement age, right? The challenge to the French pension system at a time of increasing social unrest. These politicians are going to want to promise families that their kids won't freeze to death because of energy costs. So money's going to be printed. As I see it, natural gas, which right now is not doing well, is going to boom. In fact, the energy sector is going to boom. You want to look at the XLE, you want to look at the XOM. Let me also name an energy company here that has a relatively low relative strength index that I think has a lot of upside, and that's New Fortress Energy, right? I'm looking at New Fortress Energy. I haven't taken the plunge yet because I have several other ideas I'm pursuing, but let's just say as we get closer to the summer months, I intend to get into New Fortress Energy, right? At least that's my present intention. I would encourage people to give that a look. Let me uh, also add to that, as you can imagine, in these tough times, as YouTube creators know here online, just looking at their revenue numbers, many are cutting their ad budgets, right? Advertisers are trying to cut back. They're cutting people. They're cutting ad dollars. So you want to look at entities that aren't completely dependent on advertising spending, right? Now, I believe that you have a nice source of income if you can find a company with, let's say, more than a billion dollars worth of market cap that isn't completely reliant on ad spending, that, quite frankly, is somewhat oversold, right? 
you'd be surprised how much money is there because people are assuming that the stock market, which is denominated in dollars, right? Don't overlook the currency dilution part of the stock market pricing. The stock market's going to drop 20% in value, right? So as you can imagine, many people in the market want insurance, right? They want to make sure that if the price drops, they're able to get rid of a certain equity holding. So there's a market right now for selling put options. And of course, Sirius Satellite Radio has been extremely good to me in terms of selling put options. You're the party getting paid from the other party. The other party is buying the right to literally put the stock on you if the price drops below the strike price. In other words, you're guaranteeing that they'll be able to sell their equity holding at some price in the future. And by making that guarantee, you get the premium, right? Well, just to understand, Sirius Satellite Radio was actually oversold for a period of time. Sirius isn't your typical radio company. They don't just make money off advertisements. They make most of their money off subscriptions. Subscriptions are different than the ad model. So the $3.50 strike price has been very good because Sirius has been on the rise. It's currently over $3.90. You now have weekly options. So every week, for the last few weeks, I've been able to sell serious put options, get a premium, and then be able to keep the entire premium. Because at the expiration of the option, the stock price was above the strike price. Right? Now, make no mistake. Put options and call options require a certain level of familiarity. Right? I don't suggest that anyone get into put options and call options unless you have carefully studied the area and unless you have done some practice trades, some imaginary trades, right, with fake money or trades with small money that you could afford to lose. Just understand that Sirius Satellite Radio, because of the explosion in sports, for example, right? You want live content. You can't get that off podcasts. You want to listen to sports teams because of the explosion in sports. And we right now are at the tail end of March Madness, right? We're about to start the baseball season. Understand there's a built-in demand for an entity like Sirius, which has the intellectual property rights to broadcast Major League Baseball games, NCAA games, etc. Right? So just understand, if you're a put writer, in other words, the person selling the puts, right? If you're a put writer and you're looking for a stock that has some resilience in this time of high volatility, take a look at Sirius Satellite Radio. Take a look at the $3.50 stock price, understand the weekly uh, $3.50 strike price, weekly put options literally roll over every week. So you have to be comfortable risk-wise with the idea of having a stock option that's going to expire literally at the end of the week, right? Which could get tripped up by market paranoia, short-term volatility, and things of that nature. Let me also say, too, getting back to my EV theme, and EV stands for electric vehicle. You know, in these tough times where new car prices are out of reach for many, right? That's what happens when you have fiat inflation, right? Car prices are denominated in fiat currency. Right, the US dollar, for example, you may have noticed that car prices are through the roof. Right, generation 
Z, which is having a hard time affording a home, is also having a hard time affording a new car, right? Let me also point out, too, that motorcycles are now transitioning into electric vehicles. So let's say I need to get around. I can't afford a new car. I decide I'm going to buy a bike. I'm going to buy an electric bike because I see that's where the infrastructure is going. That's where regulatory oversight is going. So I want an electric bike. I also want a brand name, right? Because I don't know enough about EVs. So I want the comfort of getting the bike from some manufacturer who has well-served customers in the past, right? Whose past products, internal combustion engine project, uh, products have connoted excellence, right? That's where Harley Davidson comes in. Right, the stock is H O G, right? Sirius Satellite Radio, by the way, that is S I R I, right? Harley Davidson, the uh, symbol is H O G for hog, right? Just understand Harley Davidson has a reasonable relative strength index with regard to pricing. They have an excellent brand, and of course, they're now transitioning into electric motorcycles. Right. In this day and age where new car prices are way too high. Right. And where people still need to get around and where people still need to look cool and where a lot of people in their early 20s, motorcycle riding age, early 20s to let's say late 20s are stuck living at home with their parents who they love, but who they might not want to live with. Right. You understand motorcycle culture. You understand that there are motorcycle clubs. There's the clubhouse where people hang out. I believe the uh, increasing economic uncertainty is going to lead itself to a return to more of a motorcycle-friendly environment. I believe Harley-Davidson is perfectly positioned for that, right? So let me also point out, too, when you're dealing with call options and put options that are denominated in dollars, if you, like me, believe that there's going to be inflation among fiat currencies, and understand there's no inflation if you denominate things in Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin has a set maximum money supply. Right, gold, uh, sure, they do find and mine new gold, but you understand that's marginal. The increase in the gold supply is going to pale in comparison to the increase in the fiat currency supply, especially when people are financially pinched and politicians want their vote and want to debase the currency so short term they can afford things that they really can't afford long term. Right, so just understand. I believe right now you're getting extra value on long-term call options. What do I mean? I'm talking about call options that expire more than two years from now. It's 2023. It's March 2023 as I make this video. I'm talking about call options that expire in the summer of 2025 or late 2025. So let's return to Ford. Just to understand, I believe that EVs have the potential for explosive growth, right? The price premium is coming out of EVs. People have figured out that EVs are cheaper to maintain than internal combustion engine cars. You have a whole group of people out there who are mesmerized when they're on the road next to an EV and they realize that EVs hardly make any noise. You have another group out there concerned about the environment and they love the idea that you don't have the kind of exhaust fumes and pollution with an EV that you have with an internal combustion engine car. Now, if you, like me, believe that EVs are exploding 
and if you, like me, believe that many people will want the comfort of established brand names, and if you, like me, believe that Ford is very well positioned, both in terms of name recognition, right distribution network, um, a crowd that already believes in Ford trucks, my point to you is as they debase the currency, just understand that's going to make a call option where you're buying the right to buy a hundred shares of the stock at a set price, a price you agree upon when you buy the call option. Well, if you believe that there's inflation in the system, that, you know, eggs cost X today, in two years they might cost 1.5 X, if not higher. And understand, that built-in inflation is going to get you to your strike price, even without alpha from the underlying producer. And when we're talking about EVs, we're talking about a sector that might outperform the general market. So, Ford, I believe right now, the December 2025 expiration for call options is cheaply priced. In other words, I'm expecting Ford to jump in value. I'm expecting fiat inflation to jump in value. This is as you have a deflationary part of the world denominated in gold, denominated in silver denominated in bitcoin denominated in ethereum i'm expecting understand call and put options are denominated in dollars here in the united states i'm expecting the dollars to get debased so the price of stocks is going to be artificially enhanced then i'm expecting ford to outperform the market in its ev sector so Right now, I have a call option on Ford that expires in December of 2025. In other words, more than two years from now. Yes, they're selling them. And I was able to lock it in at a $12 strike price. Right? Just understand, because of the pricing and stuff like that, I'm already in the money. But, of course, that doesn't take into account time decay. Right? Um, understand... You're in the money now because people expect for it to outperform the market. A lot can happen in that two-year period of time, right? Should public perception change, maybe I fall out of the mark, uh, out of the money, as we get closer to the day. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Ford is going to continue to show stock appreciation. I think that uh, this call option, which is already in the money, is going to give me a nice opportunity to buy 100 shares of Ford at $12 a share in December of 2025, when the actual share price of Ford, I'm expecting, will be well north of $12 a share. So give that a look. Anyway, those are my ideas this Thursday morning. Uh, there's more, but I don't want to <laughs> take up too much time or completely reveal all of my portfolio. Some privacy is nice, but if you get a takeaway from this, just understand that um, I certainly continue to believe in gold, silver, Bitcoin, Ethereum. I believe in the XLP and XLE. Uh, those are energy ETFs, exchange traded funds. Uh, I also believe in Ford. Um, Harley Davidson is a uh, stock I'm looking at, uh, New Fortress Energy. In fact, the natural gas sector is a sector I'm looking at. Um, it's springtime here in California. Just understand, we need to think about what happens in fall when the temperature drops and people need to buy energy. Um, in these tough times where the United States has a debt of more than 31 trillion dollars right where our own strategic petroleum reserve is depleted 
right? I believe there's going to be a bit of a frenzy buying energy to heat our homes uh, this coming winter. And I believe now is the time to get really cheap prices on energy before, of course, that sector starts to appreciate in value. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you have ideas you want to share with the public, please feel free to leave those ideas in the comment section of this YouTube video. Uh, if you have comments on any of the uh, equities or investment strategies I've talked about here, uh, please leave that information in the comment section of this video. Let me uh, just say nothing I've said in this video should be construed as investment advice. I'm just sharing what I'm looking at. I want everyone here to be skeptical. This is really just an entree to have you investigate ideas and to offer your input on what I'm doing. Okay? So please don't consider this to be investment advice. What you want to do is invest in what you know, what you have studied yourself. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.